Hi guys, welcome back to Wong Chemistry channel. This is going to be a short video that we are going to discuss about anomalous behavior of chromium and copper. Okay, the anomalous behavior over here means the exceptional behavior by the chromium and the copper. And there is a reason of why we have the anomalous behavior of chromium and copper. So we are going to look at the reason. So why chromium and copper having an anomalous behavior? Simple, extra stability. Why we behave differently? Because we want to become more stable. What makes the chromium and copper having extra stability? Let's say, because a half fill or a fully filled 3D orbital is more stable than others. When you have a 3D orbital, a half filled 3D orbital will look something like this. We know that D orbital maximum is a 10 electron. So a half filled 3D orbital means 3D5. You have 5 electrons in the D orbital. And a half filled 3D orbital in the term of orbital diagram will look something like this. And this half filled 3D orbital right now is having extra stability than others. Another condition for extra stability is the fully filled 3D orbital. Knowing that the D orbital maximum having 10 electron, so the fully filled 3D orbital is a 3D10. Looking at the 10, we know that we have 10 electron in this fully filled 3D orbital. And the orbital diagram of the fully filled 3D orbital shall look something like this where every box over here having two electrons or a pair of electrons, okay? So that is your 3D10. And both of this half-filled 3D orbital and the fully-filled 3D orbital will give you extra stability. This is the reason why your chromium and copper behave differently, okay? The first one, let's go into the anomalous behavior of chromium. Knowing that your chromium having 24 proton, that means your chromium neutral will have 24 electrons. So according to Afbau principle, all right, we are going to arrange the 24 electron based on the energy of each orbital. So based on the Afbau principle, the electron will be arranged from 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. That is already 18 of my electron. And everybody knows that after 3p, we must fill into the 4s. When the 4s is full, then only we fill into the 3d. This will give rise to the total of 24 electron. Okay? And from this SPDF notation, we know that the valence electron over here is your 4s and 3d. At this moment, you should be very good to determine the valence electron by using your SPDF notation. And to have a better view of this electron, I want to draw the orbital diagram of the valence electron only. So the orbital diagram of my valence electron is for the 4s having two electron and my 3d over here having four electron and according to Hans rule we will fill the electrons singly first in a set of degenerate orbitals so fill in the four electron in the 3d singly first that is the orbital diagram of my valence electron okay and from here you can see that your 3d orbital is only partially filled partially filled because it's a 3d4 you have four electron on it and why chromium will behave differently why chromium having a anomalous behavior simple because your chromium can achieve extra stability by forming half filled 3d orbital but how how can chromium form half filled 3d orbital simple one of the electron from the 4s will be excited into the 3d, okay? Therefore, in the anomalous behavior of chromium, you will realize that 
the valence electron arrangement changes. Look at the valence electron in the anomalous behavior of your chromium. It changes to 4s1 and 3d5. Compare these two parts. All right, compare these two. So from the 4s2, 3d4 to become 4s1, 3d5. Why 3d5? This is the reason. One of the electrons from the 4s will be moved up to the 3d. When you move up to the 3d, orbital diagram of the valence electron in the anomalous behavior will look something like this. The 4s only left one electron, but the 3d right now having five. And the same thing according to Hans rule, the five electron will be arranged singly first before pair up. So I hope you can see that your 3D orbital right now become a half-filled 3D orbital. And this half-filled 3D orbital is actually giving you extra stability. Alright? Therefore, your chromium will behave anomalously or differently compared to the Afbau principle. The reason is only because your chromium can achieve extra stability by having a half-filled 3D orbital. Simple, easy. Next, the anomalous behavior of copper. Your copper is a Cu with 29 proton. 29 proton means we are going to have 29 electron to be arranged in your orbital. And according to the Afbau principle, the electron will be filled into a lower energy orbital first before the higher energy orbital. So the 29 electron in the copper will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Until 3p6, that is only 18 electron. I have another 11. So after 3p6, we know that we must fill into the 4s first because 4s is having a lower energy than the 3d. So after you fill the 4s, then only you fill in the 3d. And that will give rise to a total of 29 electron. And from here, the valence electron of copper is actually your 4s2 and 3d9, okay? That is the valence electron of the copper, okay? And before I explain, I want to draw the orbital diagram for the valence electron so that you can see clearly why we have the anomalous behavior. So the 4s at this moment having two electrons. Your 3d having nine electrons, guys. So singly first, according to your Hans rule, you have five single. And then you pair up because 3d right now having nine electrons. So that is my 9 electron in the orbital, diagram of 3D, okay? And guys, why are we having anomalous behavior? Why copper having anomalous behavior? Similar as your chromium just now, but we want to achieve slightly different thing. We want to make the 3D to become a fully filled 3D orbital. So how can we make it to become a fully filled 3D orbital? Simple. One electron from the 4s will be moved up to the 3d. Okay, so in the anomalous behavior of copper, the SPDF notation will change slightly. 1s2, 2s2, everything all the way until 3d will remain the same. Okay, but the valence electron will be different. Look at the valence electron in the anomalous behavior. Your valence electron changes. The total number of valence electrons remain the same, but you can see that the arrangement is different. From the 4s2 to become 4s1. From the 3d9 to become 3d10. So one electron from the 4s is actually moved up to the 3d. And why are we doing that? Simple. Because we want to achieve the fully filled 3d orbital. Look at the orbital diagram for the valence electron in the anomalous behavior. Your 4s only have one electron left. Your 3d right now having 10. Looking at the 10 electron and when I draw it in the orbital diagram, 
singly first before you pair up, you realize that your 3D orbital right now is a fully filled 3D orbital. And everybody knows that a fully filled 3D orbital will give you extra stability. And the extra stability is what we are trying to achieve in the anomalous behavior of copper. All right. So anomalous behavior is only because we want to gain more stability. And in our syllabus, we will only learn for copper and also chromium just now. So don't worry about the rest of the element. Okay. Only two anomalous behavior that you need to know, which is copper and chromium. One, to achieve fully filled 3D orbital. Your chromium just now is to achieve half filled 3D orbital that will give you extra stability. All right. And that's it for this short video. I hope you now understand why your chromium and copper have an anomalous behavior. If you still have any question, drop it in the comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Remember to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more videos. I'll see you in the next video and thank you for watching.